<laughs> I am going to be quite controversial in this, but hear me out, because Rob has just messaged in. Rob says, Darren, Starmer is more interested in the world stage than the United Kingdom and has gone power mad. Now, I think that's the issue here. The world stage. Why do we talk so often mm. about needing a seat at the table? I'd quite like my table to be a bit damn better and comfortable in this country. Should we not be focusing on that instead? Do you ever get the feeling, my friends, that talking about the Commonwealth and other... The UN, it could be a whole load of them. The Commonwealth itself wants a symbol of shared history. I think it's now just a line of leaders with rattling begging bowls saying, actually, Britain owes us some pennies. We're told that we're responsible for all the world's ills, as Will has outlined, and surprise, surprise, it's our money that's the solution. But if this is all the Commonwealth has become, right, to talk about these issues or to talk about uh, S S King Charles's penchant for net zero and all these other things that are going to make us colder and poorer, then is it time to ask ourselves, are these still partnerships worth holding on to? As the PM and the Foreign Secretary rub shoulders in Samoa, some of these leaders are demanding those reparations for wrongs that took place hundreds of years ago. I tell you, my friends, my granddad was down a mine when he was a kid. Should I ask for reparations <coughs> for that as a form of slavery? My ancestors died actually down pits. Clearly, there, are, uh, there is a sense that there is blood in the water and Starmer is a weak, lame duck. They just forget Britain didn't just leave footprints, we left common law, we left railways, we left ports, we respected education institutions. And it's funny how these assets still in use today are totally sidelined and ignored. We need to talk about each of these institutions that see Britain as a cash cow. The UN, the Commonwealth, I could go on and on and on. Don't get me started on Davos and the World Economic Forum. Mm. They see Britain as the ultimate cash cow. So I say maybe it's time to cut them loose. Loyalty is a two-way street, and right now it feels like we're the only ones playing the toll. I'm absolutely sick. The UN, the ECHR, the Commonwealth, the EU, Britain's soft power, superpower. We need to actually focus on these things. A seat at the table. You sound like you've swallowed Lord Mandelson. We've got our own issues here. Mm. Let's deal with them, eh? Darren, here's my challenge with this. There's the practical side of things as to whether the Commonwealth is really valuable anymore, and I think we can all agree it's of relatively limited use. But there's a deeper meaning behind the Commonwealth that reflects British and Commonwealth history, and it's that modern incarnation of our history that I feel if you just rip it away, it's just another thing that we're slowly tearing down. L oh, listen, the only thing I feel sad about is that it was very dear to our late Queen's heart, and that makes me feel sad. <clears throat> But I think actually, I can't think of a single thing that the, the Commonwealth doesn't strive to better democracy, for example, and all these other things. If you look across but it's, some nations in the Commonwealth, you can't argue that they are open, free, and not corrupt. But I would there is argue a lot that of corruption. Nor are we anymore. Well, I mean, you could argue to a certain extent, I'm talking pilfering from the state in certain countries. That's why, actually, you know, they say, oh, well, Britain left us poor. No, actually, I'm afraid, in many cases, a lot of your own leaders have left you poor. You see, I yeah. think, thinking about the history, the Commonwealth actually is a beautiful example of how we came after the war and we got into a situation where Britain was being accused all of the time of being this great coloniser who did all of these bad things. And I think the Queen, who brought this all together, demonstrated actually that we are one of the most open and forgiving societies in the world. And we brought together countries that would never be teammates at the table, really, mm. from all races, you know, all different cultures. And I think the Commonwealth, <clears throat> from that perspective, is something that we should be proud of. Mm -hmm. And I think my gut says, Darren, that we should keep it. That doesn't mean we should just bend over any time one of them says, oh, we need reparations. But I do think the Commonwealth is a force for good, and I really enjoy the Commonwealth Games. I just don't... I think, again, we're looking at it from our eyes as British citizens. I wonder in the Commonwealth countries how they view us. Because if being part of the Commonwealth, it really should mean that if you are from India, for example, you should be able to get a visa to come to this country to study, to work, with relative ease. Why should it mean that? Because part of the, the Commonwealth is essentially just an extension of this country. Well, I'm sorry, that, that backs up my argument of why we should leave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we should do that at all. Yeah, I'm but sure it Indian have billions, mean. over a billion people living in Listen, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just <laughs> literally putting forward the, the point of, if you look at the same, same way as, uh, let's say, take North America, 
uh, if you're North America, if you're American or Canadian, there, there's, there's a tie within those that you can pretty much travel freely between the two. The Commonwealth is an extension of this country. We cannot have it. We look at it from our, which is our perspective, well, perspective on, and we're on. saying if it's the, 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 the Brit, Brit, Britain's done great for all these countries. What are they doing for us? Well, if, if, if you think if you think that from our perspective, how do people who are on the other side of the coin look at us? Because it's not just a case of down to us to decide JJ, whether we say the Commonwealth. Go to India tomorrow and work without a visa. Or... No, no, but absolutely, you can get a visa. However. But we can get visas relatively easy to go to India and go to, go to any, well, any Commonwealth countries. The Commonwealth countries, many of the member states, cannot come to this country as easy as we can go to theirs. That's factual. So I can any of you, or you're all big fans of, of the Commonwealth. Can any of you list all member states of the Commonwealth? Oh, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Commonwealth. Mass, mass I, 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 <laughs> I, I think it should be um, pulled apart. But oh. you said it's an extension of ourselves, right? But yeah, we know yeah, nothing yeah. about this institution. Other well, what I'm it. saying is, Darren, for people like Renee who support the Commonwealth, think it's great, we should keep it. I'm saying, well, OK, but the Commonwealth is what it's supposed to be, is an extension of this country. Because next year, it's Ghana's turn, I think, to, to be the Secretary General of of, of the Commonwealth, of the institution itself. And they guess what? They're in favour of reparations. So this debate is going to go on and on and on. And Starmer gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And I think we <clears> suffer <throat> as a consequence. And I'm telling you right now, the British people will not stand for it. They will see this as a, a naked attempt to fleece the nation. And I worry that... All of these institutions are doing that. You know, the ECHR telling us we can't have border policies. The UN telling us that actually, you know, we don't have a right to uh, defend ourselves from so-called human rights abuses. Yeah. Darren, so, I, don't, I don't think this is a problem with the Commonwealth as much yeah. as how we are approaching the Commonwealth under a weak leader at the moment. This could actually be a wonderful vehicle for soft power for the UK if they said, right, we are the natural leader of the Commonwealth. Let's actually get this group of 56 member countries together, get them on the same page and be a viable alternative. But is that not a new form of colonialism, would you argue, JJ? As in saying Britain is the natural mm. leader of the Commonwealth? They no, would argue that's, that just... that's outdated, wouldn't they? No, I don't think so, because essentially now what you'd have is leaders in those countries. It's not a case of Britain making rule and those people having to just go along with it. There's leaders in those countries who can now stand up and say, no, we don't agree with that, we're not doing it. We're not going to have your judges tell us our rules anymore. True. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.